Okay, so good day to all of you. So in this tutorial, so we're dealing with um, a uh, CPU scheduling exercise. So this exercise composed of a set of processes and their corresponding burst times in milliseconds and priority. And then for the problem, you are asked um, to illustrate the different scheduling algorithms. So for scheduling algorithms, um, if, if it's ever first come first serve, SJF or priority or round robin, you should know how to um, illustrate the scheduling algorithms. And then this is also used for algorithm evaluation. So for this set of processes, which of the scheduling algorithms is optimal? So let's start our exercise. So for this example, okay, so let me read the text. So, consider the following set of processes with the length of the CPU burst given in milliseconds. So, we have process P sub 1, then the burst time in milliseconds is 10, and then the priority is 3, and then process P sub 2 is burst time is 1, priority is 1. Um, P sub 3, burst time is 2, priority is 3. P sub 4, burst time is 1, priority is 4. And then P sub 5, we have burst time 5 and then priority 2. And then next is the processes are assumed to have arrived in the order P sub 1, P sub 2, P sub 3, P sub 4, P sub 5 all at time 0. And then letter A. So draw 4 Gantt charts illustrating the execution of these processes using FCFS or first come first serve, SJF or the shortest job first. A non-preemptive priority, so specifically, a smaller priority number implies a higher priority. And then, a round robin with time slice quantum is equal to 1 scheduling. And then, letter B, so what is the turnaround time of each process for each of the scheduling algorithms in part A? And then, letter C, what is the waiting time of each process for each of the scheduling algorithms in part A? And letter D, which of the schedules in part A results in the minimal average waiting time over all processes? So for this example, so we will have, uh, before we start, so let's calculate first the total burst time of the set of the processes. So we have, uh, let's use a pencil. So, okay, we have 10 plus 1, 11 plus 2, 13 plus 1. 14 plus 5 is equal to 19. Why do we need to get the total burst time? So that we are guided that for every gun chart, the maximum total burst time should always be equal to 19. It should not differ from FCFS, SJF, non-preemptive priority, and round robin. This is just, of course, to make sure that you won't, uh, it should be exactly 19 because that's the total burst time of the set of processes from P sub 1 to P sub 5. Okay, so let's start our um, example. So, so for letter A, we are there are instructed to create four Gantt charts because for first come first serve, SJF, then we have non-preemptive priority and round robin. Okay, so let's start. Okay, so we have letter A. So let's start with FCFS or the first come, first serve. So the maximum number of, uh, uh, total number rather of burst time is 19 for the five processes. So, okay, so as I've already discussed in the lesson, so the gun chart always starts with zero. So, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, and nineteen. Okay, then. Let's have, let's put here for the Gantt chart. Okay, then let's create a line. 
Okay. And then... Okay. So, this is the total for our gun chart for FCFS. Of course, we're not yet finished because based on the problem, so we have... Okay, first come, first serve means... So, when did the processes arrive? Actually, this is uh, stated in here. The processes are assur assumed to have arrived in the order P sub 1, P sub 2, P sub 3, P sub 4, P sub 5, all at time 0. Though they arrived all at the same time, but they have this order. So, let's follow the order for P sub 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So, the first one is P sub 1, and its burst time is 10. So, you can already see here 10. Okay, let's put a line here, a boundary line. Or, if you want to, you can count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Just to be sure that you really have 10. So, this um, first chunk or slice, time slice, is we have 4, P sub 1. So, we're already finished with P sub 1. Next is we have... P sub 2, which is, the burst time is 1. So, you only need a slice. So, we have, that's will that will be P sub 2. And then, P sub 3 is 2 milliseconds. So, 1, 2. So, P sub 3. And then, P sub 4 is also 1. P sub 4. And then we have, of course, P sub 5 is 5. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, it's really exact because the total number of burst time is 19. So, we have P sub 5. Okay, for gun chart, of course, always start with 0. And then maybe you have a question, how about the priority? Actually, uh, we will not concern ourselves yet for this one because this will be used in the non preemptive priority scheduling. So, we already have a gun chart for... Uh, FCFS or the first come first serve. Okay, let uh, let's go with next. So the next um, scheduling algorithm is we have the SJF or the shortest job first. Okay, again let's do this. Let's have a gun chart. So we have zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19. Okay. Okay. Okay, so for SJF is, so the SJF is what? Shortest job, shortest job first. So we're going to have, for this example, so among the, this um, burst time, which, the, which of them is the um, shortest? Actually, it's P sub 2 and P sub 4, but since we're going to, again, um, uh, follow which is the what is written in here the processes are assumed to have arrived in the order so P sub 1 comes first um, uh, uh, compared to P sub 4 so let's have P sub 2 is 1 okay so again we're already finished with P sub 2 and then next is we have P sub 4 Okay, another 1 millisecond. And then next is we have P sub 3. So, P sub 3, we need 2. 1, 2. P sub 3. Okay, next is we have... Uh, we have what? P sub 5. So, we have 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, P sub 5. And... Of course, last but not the least is we have P sub 1 because it is the longest. Okay, so uh, let's just check 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 
So, we have this Gantt chart for SJF. Okay, next is we have the non-preemptive priority. So, non-preemptive priority. Okay, so for the non-preemptive priority, so the condition here is what? A smaller number implies a higher priority. So, of course, if it is number one, it is um, first. And, and, of course, we have an example here. So, in this priority, we can see that there are two processes that has the same priority. So, what are we going to do there? So, let's decide later on if we're already um, finished with, um, or rather, we're finished with the first two, priority one and priority two. Okay, so non-preemptive priority. So, again, let's create for the Gantt chart. So, again, start with zero. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Okay. Okay. So, let's go with the problem. So, priority 1 is P sub 2. So, we'll have here P sub 2. Okay, next is we have priority, the second priority is P sub 5. So, we have 5. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, P sub 5. Okay, next is we have so, for the third priority, with priority number 3, is we have P sub 1 and P sub 3. As you can remember with uh, the lesson of the operating system concepts, so, instead of using first come, first serve, so, it is more effective to use round robin since these two have the same priority. So, be, since they are given the same priority, they should be given enough time. So, we're going for same uh, same priority number, we're going to use round robin. So, for the round robin, it is stated here that the quantum slice is equal to 1. So, let's use the quantum slice that is also indicated in the problem. So, P sub 1 will go first. So, P sub 1 is... We're going to give a slice of time slice of 1. So, P sub 1. Okay. Okay, you can monitor it if you want to. For example, for P sub 1, it uses time slice. So, we have 9. Okay. Next is we have P sub 3. So, P sub 3. Okay, so we have, okay, you can, just to make sure, then 1, and then we're going to return again to P sub 1. So, P sub 1 here, again, another time slice, P sub 1, okay, and then this will be 8, and then going to P sub 3 again, so... This is already, uh, P sub 3 is already served or already executed. So, finish executed because only two burst time. So, this will become 0. So, it ends there. And then for P sub 1, since uh, it has still 8 um, burst times or in 8 milliseconds left for its burst time. So, what we're going to do here is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, that will be for P sub 1. Be uh, because um, P sub 3 is already finished. And 
um, P sub 1 is the only one with the same priority. So, it only continues to um, execute. And then, last but not the least is we have, okay, we have P sub 4, the, uh, the last, the lowest priority, and then its time slice is 1 millisecond. So, we have P sub 4. Okay, so this is for our non-preemptive priority. Okay, and then last but not the least is we have round robin. So, quantum is equal, is equal to 1. Okay, for this scheduling algorithm. So, we have round robin. Okay, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay. So, let's have a line again. Oh, okay. So, for round robin, again, so, in the order again, which is P sub 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, so, time slice is what? 1 milliseconds. Okay. So, first is we have P sub 1. So, it's very short, the time slice. So, P sub 1. So, again, let's start for, if you want to monitor your progress, you can, this is for the priority, and then this is for the round robin. So, this will become 9. Okay, next is we have P sub 2. So, give another time slice for P sub 2. So, this is already finished. And then P sub 3 is we have. Okay, next is P sub 3. Then again, it will also uh, be 1 because um, a time slice is already executed, 1 millisecond. And then P sub 4. Okay, P sub 4. Since it's only 1 millisecond, so it's already finished executing. And then P sub 5 is the next. So P sub 5. And then, 4. Okay, since the only uh, processes that is not yet finished with uh, with their execution is P sub 1, P sub 3, and P sub 5. Okay, so again, let's return uh, to P sub 1. So, P sub 1. Okay, then we have 8. Okay, next is we have P sub 3. So, P sub 3 is already finished executing. So, it only requires 2 millisecond of its burst time. And then, we have P sub 5. Okay, P sub 5. Then, this will become, okay, 3. So, it's only P sub 1 and P sub 5 that is left that uh, that's not yet finished with its execution. So, let's return again with P sub 1. Okay. So, this will be 7 and then P sub 5. So, this will become 2. Okay. Actually, you can do, you can, you can uh, compute it, compute this mentally if you want to, but uh, it's just for making sure that you won't um, miss anything. And then again, P sub 1. Okay, so this will be... Okay, 6. And then P sub 5 again. So it will only be 1. So last one for P sub 5. And then P sub 1, so this will be 5. And then for P sub 5, we have 
one. So this already uh, P sub five has already finished its execution. It's only P sub one. So for P sub one, so we have how many uh, still remaining for P sub one? Is we have five. Okay, so let's count. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, it means that these are all P sub 1. But, we have to take note that, though for non-preemptive priority, after P sub 3 is finished, it only continues to um, execute without the time slice. Because, of course, uh, this P sub 1 is the, is the, uh, has, uh, the only priority number in which P sub 3 is already finished. So, for this example... Um, since to show that there's still a time slice, even though um, uh, P sub 1 is the only one executing, so we will also divide them or the time slice into 1 depending on the time quantum of round robin. But it's all P sub 1. Actually, there is no difference. It's just that uh, this shows that... Um, we still have a time quantum of 1, so we need to divide it in here. Okay, this is just to show the difference between round robin and, for example, non-preemptive priority with round robin. So, this is our um, gun chart for first come, first serve, SJF, non-preemptive priority, and round robin. Okay, so next, we're finished with the gun chart. So, next is we have letter B. What is the turnaround time of each process for each of the scheduling algorithms in part A? So, next is we have turnaround time for letter B. Okay. Okay, so we have letter B, turn around time. So, what is turnaround time? Actually, turnaround time is the the whole um, uh, the whole duration in which the process has waited, um, executed. So that is the turnaround time. So in short, so turnaround time is equal to or is equivalent to waiting time plus burst time, and if there is an arrival time, you have to subtract the arrival time. But since in this example, our arrival time is time is 0 milliseconds, so it will not bear any difference because the arrival time is 0. But if there is an example in which there is a specific arrival time, so turn uh, turnaround time is, again, waiting time plus burst time, and then subtract the arrival time. So for this... Um, um, uh, what is asking by the problem so let's have a table so let's write the processes so we have P sub 1, P sub 2 P sub 3 P sub 4 and P sub 5 ok so and then our 4 scheduling algorithms so we have FCFS and then next is we have SJF. Okay, let's shorten non preemptive priority. So NPP. And then last is we have round robin. Okay, so the, we're going to calculate the turnaround time. So based on the gun chart, okay, so for P sub 1. So, let's return with P sub 1. So, turnaround time again is waiting time plus burst time minus arrival time. As you can see, um, for uh, P sub 1, so P sub 1 in FCFS is, this is the burst time. And then, it does not have any waiting time. Okay, so, our... Uh, Okay, let's just illustrate the waiting time. So, the wait, what is the wait, waiting time of P sub 1? Actually, it has no waiting time. So, we have 0 plus, okay, the, uh, the burst time is we have 10. So, we have 10 milliseconds. Okay, for P sub 2, so P sub 2's waiting time is what? 
So, waiting time is uh, before the actual process. And then, the uh, burst time is actually the, of course, it's already given in the, tab in the table. So, P sub 2's waiting time before it is executed is 10 milliseconds. Why it is the waiting time? Of course, P sub 2 is already lined up in the, in the queue. And then, it is only being served after 10 milliseconds because P sub 1 is, ex is executed at that time. So, the waiting time of P sub 2 is 10 plus its burst time, we have 1. So, we have 11 milliseconds. And then, for P sub 3, okay, for P sub 3 is we have... Its waiting time is 11 milliseconds plus, okay, 1, 2. Its burst time, so we have 13 milliseconds. And then for P sub 4, waiting time is what? Waiting time is 13 plus the burst time is only 1, so we have 14 milliseconds seconds and then last but not the least so for p sub 5 so for p sub 5 our waiting time is 14 plus how much is its um, burst time 1 2 3 4 5 so 14 plus 5 is equal to 19 milliseconds okay so that is for the turnaround time for the first come first serve scheduling algorithm. Okay, next is we have SJF. So, this is our SJF. So, P sub 1's waiting time is what? Is we have 9 milliseconds plus the burst time we have 10. So, 9 plus 10 is equal to 19 milliseconds. And then P sub 2 so, does P sub 2 ha, have waiting time? It does not have. So, we have 0 plus its burst time is 1. So, we have 1 millisecond. And then, we have P sub 3. So, P sub 3's waiting time is equal to 2. And its burst time is also equal to 2. So, 2 plus 2 is equal to 4 milliseconds and then p sub 4 uh, p sub 4 is what p sub 4's waiting time is 1 and then its burst time is 1 so we have 2 milliseconds and of course last but not the least p sub 5 its waiting time is 4 milliseconds plus its um Burst time, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, 5, 4 plus 5 is equals to 9 milliseconds. So, this is our turnaround time for shortest job first. Okay, how about the non-preemptive priority? Okay, for P sub 1, okay, so you can do the just to show the uh, waiting time and the burst time. But it's difficult for non-preemptive priority because as we can see in our example is that there are uh, P sub 2 and P sub 3 are separated in, uh, in different slices. So, but it's easier to detect the turnaround time. So, for P sub 1, so since P sub 1 is uh, divided into chunks because, uh, because the, uh, P sub 1 and P sub 3 have the same priority, so... Uh, it is employed with a uh, round robin. So, what we're going to do here is for, again, let's take it in mind that turnaround time is waiting time plus burst time. And if there's arrival time, subtract the arrival time. So, for P sub 1 is, since this is the last P sub 1, so 1, 2, 3. So, we're just going to get its um, uh, the, the maximum uh, time slice, which is here is... 18. So, we have 18 milliseconds. Okay? And then, P sub 2. Where is P sub 2? 
So, P sub 2 is also uh, just the same with shortest job first. We have no uh, waiting time and its burst time is 1. So, it's also 1 milliseconds. Okay, next is we have P sub 3. So, P sub 3, since this is just the same case with uh, P sub 1 in which they have the... Uh, same uh, same uh, priority, which is priority 3. So, just locate the, the, the last P sub 3. So, this is the, we have 2 P sub 3. This is the last. So, this 10 will be its turnaround time. So, we have 10 milliseconds. Okay, next for P sub 4. So, P sub 4 is, we have, of course, 19 milliseconds. And then, P sub 5. So, P sub 5 is, we have 6 milliseconds. So, 6 milliseconds. So, that will be the turnaround time for non-preemptive priority scheduling. And then, last but not the least, is we have round robin. So, round robin... It has uh, similar with the non-preemptive priority with the same schedule. So, let's uh, do that um, technique. Okay, so for P sub 1, so locate the last P sub 1. So, actually, this is the last P sub 1. So, our turnaround time will be 19 milliseconds. Okay, next is we have P sub 2. So, P sub 2 is just um, 1 millisecond. So, it's here. So, we have waiting uh, waiting time of 1. And then, you can write it if you want to. If, if you want to, 1 is the waiting time. Plus, its burst time is also 1. So, we have 2 milliseconds. Okay, next, we have P sub 3. So, locate the last P sub 3. So, this is the last P sub 3. So, this will be our turnaround time. So, we have 7 milliseconds. Okay, next is we have P sub 4. So, P sub 4 is just located here. So, its waiting time is 3 and then its burst time is 1. So, we have 4 milliseconds. And then last but not the least for P sub 5, we have to locate the last P sub 5. Okay, the last P sub 5 is here. So, our turnaround time will be 14 milliseconds. Okay, 14 milliseconds. So, that is our turn around time okay well, we're finished with letter b okay our next is we have what letter c so letter c is what is the waiting time of each process for each of the scheduling algorithms in part a so what we're going to do with letter c is the waiting time Okay, so letter C, waiting time. Again, just with the turnaround time, let's create a matrix or table. So we have P sub 1, P sub 2, P sub 3, P sub 4, and P sub 5. And then for the first come, first serve. Then we have SJF. Then we have the non-preemptive priority. And we also have the round robin. Okay, waiting time. So let's return with our um, gun chart for FCFS. So P sub 1's waiting time is we have... P sub 1 does not have any waiting time. So its waiting time is 0 milliseconds. How about P sub 2? So, P sub 2's waiting time is we have 10 milliseconds. 
And then P sub 3's waiting time is what? 11 milliseconds. And then P sub 4's waiting time is 13 milliseconds. And last but not the least, the waiting time of P sub 5 is we have 14 milliseconds. Okay, so again, waiting time, it means that before uh, it, uh, before it will be executed, this is the time in which the, the, the process has not yet executed, but it is already lined up. So that's why this is the waiting time. Okay, actually, we can counter check the waiting time with turnaround time because as I've said, turnaround time is waiting time plus burst time. And if there's an arrival time, you have to subtract it. So as you can see, let's just compare. So for our uh, waiting time, let's just counter check. So for uh, P sub 1, so 0, 10, 11, 13, and 14. So it means that it is correct. Okay, so because um, for example, 19, mil 19 milliseconds and then the burst time is 19 minus 5. So the waiting time is equal to 14. Okay, next is we have... SJF, so SJF, P sub 1's waiting time is what? We have 9 milliseconds, and then for P sub 2 is we have 0 milliseconds. And then, for P sub 3 is we have 2 milliseconds. 2 milliseconds. And then, P sub 4 is 1 millisecond. And then, last but not the least, P sub 5 is we have 4 milliseconds. So, that is the waiting time for shortest job first. Okay, next is we have the non-preemptive priority. So, for non-preemptive priority, actually, this is very tricky. Why? Because uh, for non-preemptive priority, we're going to locate, um, for example, for this one, we're going to locate the uh, uh, the last piece of one, and then we're going to um, count the times that it is not being served. Okay, so let's have an example. So again for P sub 1, so this is the last P sub 1. So from um, do not count here because this is the turnaround time. So it's just until here. Count the times in which P sub 1 is not served. Okay, so we have 1, 2, 3, so P sub 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, this is already 6. Since it is served here, skip this one. 6, 7, 8. Okay? Again, for getting the waiting time is you have to um, collocate uh, for P sub 1, which is the same priority, and it is um, divided in chunks. Locate the last chunk, and then for its waiting time, um, count the times in which P sub 1 for this example is not served. Again, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. So we have 8 milliseconds for P sub 1. And then for P sub 2, we don't have any problem. So it's waiting time. It does not have any waiting time. So we have 0 milliseconds. Okay, then next is P sub 3. Just the same case with P sub 1, so we have, this is the last P sub 3, so this is the supposedly the waiting time is 9, but what we're going to count here again is the times in which P sub 3 is not served. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So we have 8 milliseconds, and then P sub 4. So, we don't have any problem with P sub 4. Its waiting time is 18 milliseconds. And last but not the least, for P sub 5 is we have its waiting time is only 1 
millisecond. Okay, so we're already on the last scheduling algorithm, which is round robin. So the case is just the same with non preemptive priority with the same priority number. So for P sub 1, okay, so since this is all P sub 1, the last 5, since we're dealing with waiting time, so this is the from the series of P sub 1, so this should be the waiting time, but then again, just like with non-preemptive priority, so count the times in which P sub 1 is not served. So from here, from here to here, so we have... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So, we have 9 milliseconds of waiting time. So, just to make sure, again. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Just skip P sub 1. Okay. Next is we have P sub 2. So, P sub 2. So, its waiting time is 1 millisecond. Okay. Next is we have P sub 3. So, P sub 3 is, this is the last P sub 3. 6 is supposedly its um, waiting time. But, it is served for 1 millisecond. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, we have 5 milliseconds. Okay. P sub 4 is... We have, it's only one chunk or one millisecond. So, one, two, three. We have three milliseconds. And last but not the least is we have P sub 5. So, the last P sub 5 is here. Supposedly, its waiting time is 13. But then again, we're going to subtract uh, the slices that P sub 5 is served. Okay. Or you can count again. So, from here... Okay, so skip P sub 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, so we have 9 milliseconds. Okay, so we have the table for the waiting time. Okay, so our next... Uh, what we're going to do next is what? So, for letter D, which of the schedules in part A results in the minimal average waiting time? So, we, are, we already have a matrix for the waiting time for each of the processes and the scheduling algorithms. So, what we're going to do here now is we're going to get the average. Okay, so let's get the average. Let's go back with the waiting time matrix and then get the average. Okay, so let's add this one so 10 so we have uh, 1 2 3 4 so we have 8 okay 1 2 3 4 48 milliseconds divided by 1 2 3 4 5 so if we're going to divide by 5 so this will be equivalent to 9.6 milliseconds the average um, waiting time for First come, first serve is 9.6 milliseconds. Okay, for SJF, so we have 9 plus 2, 11, 12. So we have 12 plus 4, 16 milliseconds divided by 5. Okay, so 16 divided by 5 will be equal to 3.2 milliseconds for shortest job first so that is the average waiting time okay for non preemptive uh, priorities we have 888 8, 8, 8 times 3 24 25 okay 1 2 3 so we have 35 milliseconds divided by 5 so this is divisible by 5 so this is in milliseconds it will be equivalent to 7 milliseconds. Okay. And then last but not the least is we have what is the average waiting time for round robin? 9 plus 1, 10 plus 5, 15. 
16, 17, 18, 18 plus 9 is we have 27 milliseconds divided by 5 will be equal to 5.4 milliseconds. So, for we're going to compare, and the question here is again, let's go back with the question. So, which of the schedules in part A results in the minimal average waiting time? So, comparing the four scheduling algorithms, so which has the minimal waiting time is we have SJF. So, for letter D, so if you want to have a complete answer, so SJF has the minimal average waiting time of 3.2 milliseconds. Okay, so for this example is we have SJF has the has the minimal average waiting time. So, there is a question if it's, is there a possibility that other uh, scheduling algorithm will have a smaller or, or uh, so of course, a smaller average waiting time than SJF. As you can see with first come, first serve, the order uh, the order matters because, for example, if the, the, the order of... Uh, of the of the if the of the, the process is to be executed first or shorter, so there is a possibility, but there is always um, in most cases SJF is always the optimal scheduling algorithm that is used. Okay, so again, so thank you very much for uh, um, um, for joining our tutorial for the CPU scheduling. So, I hope that you've learned something about uh, this lesson. And then, if you do have any questions, please feel free to comment below. And don't forget to subscribe and like my page and the channel. So, thank you very much and good day.